Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss how to shave with a double-edged safety razor. So how do you shave with a double-edged safety razor? Well, first I will show you the classic technique of how to get there, and then I will show you a much faster way that gives you the same smooth results. Whenever you shave with a sharp blade, step number one is always a pre-shave routine. I can't emphasize that enough. So what does it mean? Well, for one, you can take a hot shower that makes your hair soft. If you don't want to shower, you can use a wet towel. The way I do it is I just make a towel wet, put it in the microwave for a minute, and that's plenty hot, and I put it on my face and let it rest there. It's very comforting, but it also helps my hair to get soft. If that's too much time for you, you can also splash your face with hot water for a minute or two until you can feel your hair is getting soft. Step number two, apply shaving cream or shaving lather to your face. If you're in a hurry, I suggest you get shaving cream from a tube. Never use aerosol cans because I don't have enough fat. You can also use a shaving soap, but you'll need a brush to lather it up and it takes a bit more time. That being said, using the shaving brush is probably the best way because it puts the leather all around the hair. And it also may help to move your hair slightly away from your face, which makes the shave easier. If you wanna learn more about why aerosol cans are so bad, please check out this video here. Once you have the shaving cream or a lather on your face, it's time to actually shave. Of course, by this point, you should have loaded up your head with a blade and made sure it's all straight and not in there crooked because you don't want to cut yourself. The goal of the first pass is to remove any excess hair so you can then shave in a second or maybe sometimes a third pass to get that perfectly smooth result. When you're just starting out, I always suggest to stand in front of the mirror and look at the growth directions of your beard hair before you even start shaving or lathering up. If you can't remember how your beard grows, maybe you take a little, little pen and paper and draw on the directions you think your hair is growing in. Honestly, it's very simple. Just look at it closely and you'll see it. Why is it important to do that? Well, in the first pass, you wanna shave in the direction of your hair grain, which is much less stressful on your skin. Honestly, every man has a slightly different growth direction, and so it's hard to make blanket statements. Personally, I've memorized my growth directions, so I know exactly in what way I have to shave. When you make a pass, always ensure that your skin is tight or stretched, because if there's loose skin, you're much more likely to cut yourself. So what does it mean specifically? Well, I always use my free left hand to stretch my skin just in the area where I'm gonna shave next. That can mean pulling your sideburn, overhead, or you just pull your skin in that area just before the razor blade goes over it. Sometimes around your cheeks, you can also just puff your cheeks to get enough air there to make sure the skin is tight. In the area below your nose and your mouth, you can also tighten your skin with your muscles or just use your tongue from the inside. Depending on the head of your double-edged razor, you should hold your handle at an angle of about 30 to 45 degrees. You'll hear what the right angle is once you do the pass. When you do the pass, you wanna be very gentle on the skin. Don't have any strong pressure. Just use gravity to slide down on your face. Ensure that you make short and slow strokes, which are also known as passes. When you start, make sure you shave in straight strokes at a 90 degree angle to the blade. That way, you are less likely to cut yourself. Once you're a little more advanced, you can also have a slight stride, which means you go at a slight angle because this kind of movement creates a stronger cutting motion. Alternatively, you can get a handle that is slightly angled. So if you pull down your handle straight, it always cuts the hair at an angle, therefore enhancing the cutting motion, just like on a guillotine. Frankly, I only suggest those angled heads for people with very thick hair because it makes for a more aggressive razor. And what's the problem with that? Well, if you have just very thin beard hair, you still get the same result with a less aggressive razor and your skin will thank you for it. Once you're done with one or two strokes, just switch the handle to the other side and use the other blade and repeat once or twice. Now it's time to rinse the blade. You can either do it under running water or in a sink that's filled with water. If you feel any kind of pulling or any pain when you shave with a DE razor, it either means that you didn't do a proper pre-shave routine or that your blade is dull. 
Now, if you use shave cream, you can clearly see where you've already shaved. Personally, I like to have a little bit of extra shaving cream in my free hand so I can apply it after each pass because you can't have too much shaving cream on your skin when you shave it because it protects it. Beginning may be tempting to go over the same area three or four times without reapplying shaving cream, but trust me, it's better to have new shaving cream on there every time before you shave. That being said, when you're just learning a technique, everything is gonna take you a lot longer. And so by the time you make it from your right side to the left side, you may already get this drying feeling on your face. Now, you don't want a dry shaving cream because it clogs up and it prevents the skin protection. Therefore, if you can feel that it gets a little drier, wet your hand, go over the area again, and maybe reapply a little bit of lather or shaving cream just so everything is fresh before you shave over it. The tricky areas are usually right underneath your nose and underneath your mouth, and again, I use my tongue and some puffed air to make sure the skin is straight in those areas. Also on your jawline, it can be hard to get it smooth all the way along. So what I do is I pull up my skin and make sure that this skin here is up here so it's straight and I can shave it smoothly and I get that smooth result. Every man has different problem areas. For example, underneath my right ear, I always have to go in a different direction, otherwise it doesn't get all the hair. The chin is another area where it can be a little bit difficult. Again, use your fingers and your face muscles to keep the skin tight and just shave in different directions, always reapplying the shaving cream. After you're done with the first pass, there may be still some residual hair in certain places. That's when it's time for the second pass. So you put shaving cream on your face with your hand or you lather up and use the shaving brush and then you cut this time across the grain. What does it mean? Not against, but at a 90 degree angle to what you did before. Again, pull your skin tight and shave in the same manner as you did before, just at a 90 degree angle. Most men are done after that pass, but if you have thicker hair or if you want an even better and closer shave, you do a third pass, this time shaving against the grain. So when I do this, it cuts my hair below the skin level. And even after 24 hours, my face is just as smooth as if I would have just shaved it with an electric shaver. I know it sounds too good to be true, but my wife is amazed every time she feels my smooth baby butt-like skin in my face. When you shave against the grain, it can feel more aggressive on your skin and you can also hear the cutting motion more, I think. It's just because you're literally going against the grain. Once you're done with the third pass, it's time to splash your face with cold water. Some people use ice water because they believe it helps your skin to kind of close all the pores and therefore stop any kind of bleeding. I find regular cold tap water is just fine. Afterwards, it's very important to add a post-shave balm or product. Every company that offers shaving creams also has post-shave products. Some smell a little more. The traditional old-school all alcohol is not recommended because it dries out your skin. Obviously, there are tons of products in all kinds of price ranges and you can learn more about them in our in-depth shaving guide. I have found that an inexpensive Nivea aftershave balm for sensitive skin is a great product and it doesn't cost much. The result of a DE shave is superior to any cartridge razor shave and on par with systems like Supply or One Blade. Some may argue it's not quite as good as shaving with a straight razor, but that also takes a lot longer and it's even more technique. And in my mind, a straight razor is not something I would use on an everyday basis simply because it takes too long. It's more something you'd use on the weekends when you wanna enjoy the shaving process. And now the big question is, how can you achieve that same result of a DE shave just a lot faster? Well, let me share with you my shaving routine, which is geared towards the best result in the shortest amount of time. First, I start by taking a warm shower and not doing any other prep work with towels or just splashing my face. Just taking a regular shower the way I would normally already does enough to get my hair in the right condition. Two, I apply shaving cream out of the tube with my hands because that way I don't have to lather up and I don't have to clean the brush and it's super quick. In the third step, I use an electric shaver to get rid of all the excess hair on my face. This is the equivalent of the first and maybe the second pass, but it's a lot faster and you don't have to pay attention to cutting yourself because electric shavers are pretty good that way. All you have to ensure is that your electric shaver is meant to get wet because if it doesn't, you will have a problem. 
I prefer to do a wet electric shave compared to a dry electric shave simply because it gets a much closer shave and it does a much better job. So once I'm done with the electric shaver, I simply reapply the shave cream with my hand and go against the grain once. The advantage is that my blades last a lot longer that way because it's just one pass, not two or three. Afterwards, I clean up with cold water and add my post-shave ball, and I can do all of this in about five to six minutes. Of course, when you're starting out, it may take you a little longer, and this method has a disadvantage that you also have to invest in a waterproof electric shaver, which can add two or 300 bucks to the overall upfront investment. But for me, it's totally worth it because it saves me the time. And if you're honest with your time, I think it'll be worth it for you too. Just calculate how much time you would save over the course of a year, two years, or five years. All right, now you need everything you need to know about how to shave with a DE razor in a classic way, as well the time-saving way. If you wanna learn more about shaving, check out the shaving guide here. In today's video, I'm wearing a combination of a orange salmon colored shirt with a fair aisle knit vest in brown. I'm combining it with a light beige herringbone tweed jacket and a Prince of Wales check bow tie in burgundy. It's from Fort Bevelier, just like the silk wool pocket square, which picks up these earthy tones of red, brown, green, and yellow. My pants are mid-brown corduroys, and I'm combining them with Fort Bevelier socks in charcoal and orange shadow stripes, which from afar creates a look of something brownish, which goes well with the pants, as well as the olive green derby shoes, but it provides enough contrast and picks up the orange and warmer tones in the other parts of my outfit. Thank <laughs> you.